Also, you might be interested, how do I calculate the values for the snubbers? Let me show you how this waveform across the secondary looks like. Watch the scope. Oops, it's not centered. Here you can see a lot of rubbish right on there. Unfortunately, I can't hold it, or can I? Okay, the rubbish I'm talking about is that. And if you're gonna zoom in, that's what it is. It's ringing. Ringing is a parasitic oscillation, parasitic resonant oscillation. It's not ripple, it's a ringing. And if you take a look, this actually oscillates at the uh, right at the bandwidth of, of my scope, which is 10 megahertz. I take a look there, you see that the period is two divisions at 50 nanoseconds, so that's 10 megahertz. And how do I find the value? Well, I'm scoping across the primary. I take a capacitor value. Let's start small. I know that this capacitor works pretty well, but that's one nanofarad capacitor. I'm gonna put it across the primary. And look what happens to the oscillator to our ringing. See, it becomes bigger, but it's not a problem here. But what we're looking after is we need to find a value of the capacitor that after it's been placed, the frequency should go down, should go in half. So let's see. Right now it takes about one division, as you can see there. And now it takes about three divisions. So this value of capacitor is actually a bit too big, but that's fine. That's not too big. You can use a value which is quite big, but that is unnecessary. That will only cause a excessive power dissipation in this number resistor. You can see value is one interference. Next, we use a formula. This very simple formula, which you can see is three ringing periods over 2 pi times C snub, the capacitor and the values that we practically found, 3 times 100 nanoseconds over 2 pi, roughly 628 times 1 nanofarad, which is just 10 to minus 9. And if you're gonna punch it into the calculator, we'll loudly see 47.7 ohms, so we can use a 47 ohm resistor. So let's do just that. Okay, parts are soldered, as you can see a capacitor is soldered and the resistor is soldered. I'm gonna go and touch it and you will see what will happen to the ringing. You look at the scope. Okay, that's the ringing as is. I put you real close. I'm gonna connect it. That's, you, all, you can see the difference, I don't need to say anything about it. Let me just make sure I make connection and clean. That's what you're looking after. If you're gonna put too big of a capacitance, you will uh, dissipate too much power on that resistor. It makes no sense. And overall, the waveform will look much better. Let me just tweak it a little bit. As you can see that's without. That's with. See? No more ring in there. There is a little bit of overshoot, but not too big of a deal. So that's how I calculate the values. Okay. Here's a jig that I'm gonna show you how to tune the loop, com loop compensation with. 
I found this information on on a Russian website and try decided to give it a try and it works reasonably well. The jig consists of um, yes, I'm using cartridge as a pointer. It is quite nice for that. It consists of a MOSFET, preferably logic level, because well, you need logic level one if you're gonna drive it with a transistor tester or any wall square wave source which outputs 5 volts peak square wave. Then you need a low resistor, in my case 33 ohm Y4 transistor. And what I'm gonna do, I use transistor tester for simplicity. I just use it for its ability to output a square wave, 11 hertz in this case. I drive that MOSFET and that MOSFET just turns, connects this resistor to the output. And that's that. It is that simple. Now let me show you what happens to the output which I'm scoping, which I'm scoping right now with the feedback completely open. You can see the resistor is there. The, there is no loop compensation. And if I'm gonna plug it in, you will hear it squealing and you will see the rubbish on the scope. That's that, as you can see. Not nice. Let me solder that 100k resistor in. Okay, resistor is soldered. <sighs> Completely normal behavior and the output is just that that's 20 millivolts per division right now there you are the input capacity is quite leaky so but again that's 20 millivolts a division occasionally you can see a, a spike there that spike is the reaction of the power supply to the load which is fine now with these values mm, i'm gonna go also gonna go try 47k in here and see what happens the capacitor is 10 nanohertz you will see it all in the final video where i will show you the schematic it might be this video it might not be i'm gonna i mean it's a process right now i can say okay 47 kilo ohm resistor installed and the phone absolutely refuses to focus on it you can see it there now we connect seems to be fine I don't hear anything let's wait for the leaky capacitor AC coupling capacitor here to charge up ah okay charged up and now you see god damn it come on you stupid digital device there you can see occasional some spikes but i like the behavior is 100 kilos better so i'm gonna go and use that And here are those two components I was talking about. The capacitor 10 and a third one and the resistor which I did not solder in yet. 100k that I checked to be the right amount, the right value. Again, this capacitor and that resistor.